Good morning, everyone. Guess what? Today's a special day because today we're doing a marathon, and it's a marathon, a style of which I haven't done in years. So I'm excited to have a nice, chill day with you all. But in addition to that, how did yesterday go with Street Fighter VI, game news, and all kinds of other stuff? It's coming up on today's very chill episode of the Level 1 Podcast. Alrighty. Well, everyone, happy Saturday. It is May 25th, 2024. I'm DSP. Welcome to the show. And let me tell you something. After the last two straight days of full Street Fighter VI gameplay, I need the break. I need a couple of days to just kind of relax with you guys and have a good interactive time. Sadly, that's something we haven't been able to do in the last couple of days. When I'm playing fighting games hardcore like that, we don't have opportunity to really talk, right? We don't. It's more like, oh, got to be hyper-focused on the game and me trying to get better and, 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 you know, absorb tech and learn, and at the same time, getting very frustrated with online play. So, because of that, I know for a fact a lot of people in the last couple of days were kind of upset, saying, you know, we want the old Phil to come back. When When is he going to stop playing Street Fighter? Well, today is that chill day because today it is the PC Indies Marathon oh excuse me <clears throat> the PC Indies Marathon here on DSP Gaming I'm excited for today because number one we're going to get to play a variety of games I like that you know me I'm a variety guy I like making different kinds of content different kinds of games and the fact that I'm, I'm staring right now at my big picture uh, on my TV uh, of Steam and we got four great games lined up for today. Here they are, in case you guys haven't heard yet. Uh, Pizza Tower. Hades 2, which is in early access. Noita. And Stardew Valley. <clears throat> Funny enough, <clears throat> I played Stardew Valley many years ago. Um, during uh, an Indies Marathon. Guess how, how long ago? Seven years. Yeah, it was during, I want to say, I don't know if it was a Chill with Phil Marathon or if it was an Indies Marathon. But I already have it on on PC. Uh, and I remember playing it during that marathon for like an hour or so. And we basically just got through the intro and then time ran out. <clears throat> and over the years, people have been like, would you ever get back to it? I was like, hey, maybe. Maybe we consider it. But we went on to other things like Minecraft and things like that. Well, currently, we don't really have a chill game in the rotation meant just for relaxation and, and interaction. Uh, we've had games like this in the past, like Animal Crossing. <laughs> right? So maybe we'll consider it. We'll see how it goes today. But anyway, the reason I'm really excited is because today we're going to have a good time with a variety of games. You guys here live on stream are actually going to be determining the order we play them. In just a few minutes, I'm actually going to put up a poll. And you guys are going to vote on what's the first game that you want to play today between Pizza Tower, Hades 2, Noida, and Stardew Valley. Um, in addition to that, <clears throat> we're going to have some... Uh, relaxing drinking. I have some mojito mix. I have some Long Island iced tea mix. Um, later today, if I want to do some shots, I can. I have some tequila. I got all this stuff to kind of relax and chill with you guys today. Today is supposed to basically be the unwinding day from two incredibly stressful days of Street Fighter Six, which we're going to talk about in a second. Okay? So, interesting, fun, different. All right? I hope that you will join me today if you can. For people who are here live, thanks for being here for the podcast. If you can hang out for the rest of the day, that'd be great. Uh, this is a marathon-style stream, and you might be wondering, well, what does that mean? Well, normally on any given day, I do two different streams. We do a podcast and then a gaming session of about three hours. Then I break. Then I come back at night with a late-night session of gameplay that's completely different. Not the same game. Well, there's some exceptions, but mostly it's usually two different games. Today, this stream is not going to turn off. Today, it'll be podcast first indie game, you know, small break, second indie game, small break, food, where we're going to do a feasting with Phil. We're going to talk about that in a second, too. Um, and then, two more games. All right? Now, how long will we play each game? Honestly, that really depends on how it's going and how much we're all liking it. 
Like, if I'm playing a game and we're all digging it and you want more, I could keep playing it. Or, on the flip side of that, if I'm playing a game and it's like, alright, it was alright, but, you know, we played it for half an hour, it's kind of boring now, we can move on. <laughs> alright? I'm curious, because some of these games, for example, Hades 2. You know, I, I played Hades 1, I loved it. It actually, I had never played a roguelike like that before. I started playing it and it completely grew on me. And I started to respect the genre for what it was and uh, really loved it. Did an extended full playthrough of the game. All 10 runs and everything saw the true ending and all of that. So, with Hades 2 being early access, you know, I'm curious how much, you know, how much it is like the first game, if they've changed a lot. You know, everyone says that actually what's available in early access is more content than the original game. Well, I don't think we're doing 10 runs today. I don't think we're probably doing even one run today, right? We'll have to see. Um, but I'm excited to jump into it. Will it be something that we like a lot and we want more of? Will it be something that turns into a full playthrough? And that's what I really like and that I miss about doing these variety style marathons is that we used to do things like this all the time back in the day. We would have an Indies marathon, <clears throat> a fighting game marathon, a rage -athon. You know, we do these themed marathons. And then what would end up happening is usually a couple games out of there, we would all like a lot and decide, hey, why doesn't Phil do a full playthrough of it? And then I would. But we actually haven't done that in a very long time. So now that we have variety today, perhaps we'll pick out a couple of these games that we'd like to see in the future as playthroughs. I mean, notably, I bought three of them. You know, Pizza Tower, Hades 2, and Noita, I own. I spent a lot of money on today, actually. Uh, between those three games, they weren't cheap. You know, Hades was 40 bucks. Um, so hopefully, you know, these turn out into something further for content. You know, this would be the month for that, too. Because right now, I'm going to be balancing two different fighting games on and off. Street Fighter 6 and Multiverses, which is about to hit on Tuesday. Uh, in addition to that, we're continuing on with Fallout 4. So with that variety in the rotation, now we can look to maybe add a game or two into there, okay? <clears throat> so, let's see how it goes today. I'm excited. And so, so to fully disclose how this is going to work, in a moment, I'll set up a poll. You guys will vote during the podcast. That will determine the first game, all right? We'll play the first game. See how if it's good. See how long you want me to play it. At some point, there's going to be a break to switch games, in which case I'll probably take a break to use the restroom or whatever. Um, after the second game, we're going to have a meal, a feasting with Phil. Now you might say, well, it's weird, Phil, because usually when you do these marathons, you talk about it, we hype it up. What you know? What's going on? Here's the truth. My wife's not feeling good. All right, she's actually in a situation where uh, we don't know what she's going to be able to eat today properly so we didn't want to like be like oh yeah we're gonna get a big elaborate meal of all of this and then she can't eat it right what's the point of ordering out a big you know meal like that if she can't eat it so we're talking and, and basically she's gonna tell me during the day as i'm streaming when i take one of these breaks i'm gonna be going checking on her and seeing uh you know how she feels and what she wants to get because i have no idea what she's gonna be able to eat her stomach or anything you know i don't know so we'll see uh during the day, what she says, and uh, and we're just gonna order. It might, no exaggeration, it might just be like like fast food. I might be ordering McDonald's. You know, I don't I don't know. I have no idea at all. It's not really a big deal. And the truth is, usually when I do feasting with Phil, we're always ordering something really elaborate. Like I'm getting a giant two three course thing from an Indian restaurant or a ginormous sandwich from somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing these things. Maybe today, it'll end up being a little different. You know, but I don't know. I, again, this is all just a what if. It really depends on my wife. It's not just about me. Uh, so at some point during the day, we'll figure all that out and I will let you know. Okay? Um, cool. So all that being said, before we get started with this, with recapping Street Fighter and the schedule and everything, let's do the poll. Let's get the poll going live in the chat so that you guys can vote on the order of games today. All right? So just so you know, FYI, the order of games, you're going to vote right now. You're just going to vote for the first game. We're going to do more than one poll today. This poll will determine the first game we play. And then over the course of the day, we'll, you know, cut it down to what games are left. And you'll vote again and you'll vote again to determine what the next game is. Because the truth is, the crowd that's here today, right now, for the podcast, may not be the crowd that's here halfway through the marathon. So you might have difference of opinion. I don't want to have this one poll determine the order for the whole day. Okay? So here we go. Let's do a poll right now. And by the way, my apologies because YouTube changed the way that polls work and apparently everyone's complaining they look terrible. So I apologize for that. Okay, so which 
indie game should we play first today? Pizza Tower, Hades 2, Noita, or Stardew Valley? Okay. <clears throat> and I have no clue how you're going to vote at all. So I apologize if that poll doesn't look good. For me, I'm in dark mode. And in dark mode, it looks pretty good. Like, like taking a look, it looks decent. It, you know, it looks like it's black text over a white background. But I don't know how the poll looks on regular mode. So have at it. Have at the poll and vote. You can't, you can't be a loser here. No matter what game wins to be the first game, it's still going to be fun and interesting. And we're playing all four of them today regardless. Okay? Well, what's going on, everyone? What's going on, Jade? What's going on, LK the Washed? We've got a few people here. No Tango De Niro with the super chat saying chill day, and Magoo with a, a, a super sticker of an anthropomorphic hippo saying height. Very cool. Thank you guys. Okay. Yeah, you guys may have noticed YouTube is recoding and changing various things. They're at it again. So just to forewarn everyone, when YouTube recodes and does things like this, typically things break and don't work. So don't be surprised if today. During this marathon, notably, we noticed that things aren't working right for some odd reason. Like, what's going on? <laughs> right? <laughs> it could it could be, you know. Uh, and by the way, I will do formal shout-outs later. As you know, I do formal shout-outs at the end of the podcast. It looks like a tip came in, and we got other things going on. I will give everyone your due uh, credit later on in the show once we cover the topics I'd like to discuss today. Okay? Thank you very much, guys. All right. So, you guys vote on what game you want to see first. Um, oh, by the way, so I am playing on my mini PC, big picture mode on Steam, and uh, I got my Xbox controller here. I'm assuming all of these games will work with the controller. Like, Pizza Tower looks like a platformer. Hades, we know, will work because the original Hades worked with the controller. Uh, Noita looks like a pixel platformer with shooting elements. You would think it would work with the controller. And Stardew Valley might be the only one that maybe is a little weird, but I think it's on console, so it should work. So everything should work fine with my Xbox controller. We shouldn't have any issues today with any of these games. The real challenge is getting these to run well on my mini PC. For example, Pizza Tower, I don't think we'll have an issue. Noita, I doubt it. Stardew Valley, I doubt it, but maybe Hades 2 will give us some issues. We may have to change some, some settings there. We'll have to see how it boots and, you know, what it decides to do there. Um... But anyway, yes, the mini PC is Windows 11. Yes, it is. Remember, I got the mini PC last, like, late summer last year. Yep. And I got all the updates. I, I installed all the Windows updates and everything over the last day. It is fully updated, ready to go. Steam is updated. Everything's updated. So this will be the latest version of everything. This will be a good test. Now, keep in mind, this is awesome. I haven't done PC stuff in ages, right? It's really cool to be able to do stuff on PC for the first time in a very long time. I'm very happy, and thank you to the person who donated this mini PC last year because this is going to open us up to new content. Just think, if today is successful and people like some of this stuff, from time to time, I could always dabble in new PC games that are coming out, right? Not the high-end, insane graphic ones, but things like this, you know, indie games and stuff, I, I would have a whole new source of material. And that's neat, right? I'm happy for that. This is really the first day, the first event we're doing based on this, and I'm excited for it, and I hope it turns out well. I used to like playing things on PC back in the day when I could, and now we're going to get back to that, I think, okay? <laughs> exactly, Mr. iGamer, we can broaden our horizons, right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's a shame the fight cave didn't work out. I want to play classic fighting games, but I cannot put my IP address out there and put it at risk, so apologies, everybody, that it looks like fight cave ain't going to happen, because you know it's just going to take one nut job sitting there with an IP resolver trying to mess with my stuff, you know? Uh, it would be easy if I could just change my IP address quickly, but I can't. At least, I don't know if I can anymore. For those who don't know, or I, I have Comcast Internet. And it's the best internet in my area. It's the fastest available. I, I've never really had major problems with my internet. Maybe every once in a while there's a blip, but it's never anything major. But the one running thing with Comcast Internet, which is really stupid, you can't change your IP address. Comcast, when you when you basically disconnect from their internet service and you reconnect, it seeks the same IP address. So you'll get the same one again. It's so dumb. In fact, I've had times when I needed to change my IP address. The only way we could do it is to have a Comcast tech come to the house, plug in two modems at the same time so they couldn't possibly have the same IP address, and then unplug the one with the old IP address and keep the one with the new one and hook that to my account. That's how we did it. Now, here's the thing. I now have a new modem. Last year, if you guys remember, 
there was actually, if you can believe it, 100% factually proven, there was an employee at Comcast who was a troll of mine. Yes, someone who worked at Comcast, uh, you know, customer support and had access to all the internal customer data was a troll of mine who was maliciously going inside of my modem, changing my settings, putting insulting things on my wireless signals about me and my family members. And then they were resetting my internet over and over during my live streams. And we got uh, evidence of this, concretely caught them red-handed. And it's been resolved, okay? But the question now is, I don't have a, a Comcast modem anymore. I got rid of it because I said, I don't even want your equipment. If someone could go into your modem at any point, an, an employee, and literally change all my internet settings, I don't want that. So I bought my own modem. So now I have my own modem here for my business. So, you know, they can't do that anymore. So the question is, if I were to unplug that modem from the internet and then replug it in, would it get a new IP address? Or would it give me the same one again? Because I was under the impression that that was because of Comcast hardware, but maybe not. I guess we could test it, right? I guess what we could do, I, I could do that is record my IP address, unplug the modem for like a half an hour, right? Plug it back in and then see if I get a new IP address. Because if that's the case, then if someone does get my IP address, it's not the end of the world because I can easily fix it myself, right? But then again, maybe not because here's the thing. Since that modem isn't a Comcast modem, it might be that I have to call in the Comcast customer support every time that I get a new IP address to get them to re re assign it or re-register it because I had to do that when I bought that modem in the fall I had to sit there on customer service fucking hold and talk to someone across the globe all right and say hey I got a new modem here's all the information off the back and then they registered it and then it worked so I don't want to have to do that you know that's why we're not doing fight cake can you imagine I go to play fight cake and then these idiots start you know ddosing me again like they did many years ago I, I just don't want to put up with that frustration again that's why it sucks I would love to play retro fighting games but Sadly, not for me because of the insane amount of malicious people on the internet. Anyway, let's get to the subject at hand. Let's talk about Street Fighter VI. Yikes. Two days of stress. Two days of pain. Two days of online play that, I hate to say it, just isn't very good. Um, I don't know why because I don't feel like it was that bad until the patch on Wednesday. So it could simply be that just a lot more people are playing than were, which is probably exactly what happened. When this big patch came out, everyone started playing the game again because of the rebalance and because of Akuma. But it is incredibly frustrating trying to play Street Fighter VI online right now. Like, doing ranked or casual, it's just everything dropping. Combo drops, can't block, no dragon punch. In the middle of a combo, button doesn't work, right? there. I mean, it's one thing if you could say your timing is off. All right. Okay. Fair enough. I am getting older. Yes. I can probably attribute that some of the stuff that's happened to me trying to play this game in the last two days is me. But when I'm playing the game and I do a move and there's zero reaction from the game, zero, I press a button, absolutely no response from my character. That's not me. That's either an equipment failure or the game being a piece of shit online. It's one or the other. Right? So where what is it? Because it seems like my joystick works. Right? I just, you know, I didn't touch it. I didn't mess with my equipment. My equipment is my equipment. I didn't open it up and fuck with the wires. You know, I just hit master with Zangief. And everything was working. So how is it now? Nothing. No response. Or even worse, I'm holding down back and my character's crouching, blocking, and then they just stop. Right in the middle of me holding down back. I'm literally doing nothing. And someone does a full screen drive rush attack. I literally have not moved on my joystick. And it hits me and gives a full combo to the enemy. Now, like, I like... I don't get it. I, I'm lost. What the hell is going on? You know? Or uh, another thing. So, you know, I do low medium kick. The enemy is also a combo. We both do low medium kick. Theirs comes out and hits me. Mine never came out. And it's just over and over. It's not like, oh, this was an isolated incident. This happened a few times. Every match. Every match is like that. Since Wednesday. I haven't had, like, a clean match. And I'm like, what the fuck did they do to this game? I literally don't know. Right? Now, here's the thing. I'm playing on PS5. I'm playing with the joystick. There's all these factors involved, right? Could it be that 
this patch made it worse for me, but it's improved for PC players because the vast majority of people play on PC. I actually spoke to my friend Brian about this, which we're going to talk about because I played him last night in a really good set. And I hope you guys will check out those videos. We'll discuss that in a second, okay? So I actually asked my, my friend Brian directly. I was like, you know, why does everyone play on PC? And he answered very honestly. Here's what he says. Um, here it is. The main reason everyone plays on PC is an increased refresh rate, okay? So you're playing on PC, everything is refreshing faster. On PS5, you're limited to full 60 frames, but on PC, most people are playing at higher than 60 frame refresh rate, which means they can respond faster, okay? In addition, uh, people like things like costume mods, all right, and things like that. And when you play on PC, you have access to that stuff. You can't do any kind of modifications to the game whatsoever on console. So by the way, um, I was very, I was interested in that. He said one other thing. There's different controller options. Like you use hitbox, fight sticks. They're easily incorporated on the PC. They don't necessarily uh, aren't incorporated as well on, on console. So I'm thinking about this in my head, right? And I'm thinking, so let's think about this. Better refresh rate, meaning everyone on PC can actually respond faster as long as they have a higher refresh rate monitor. Most monitors are higher. My monitor right now, that's a cheap monitor, less than 200 bucks, has 120 hertz. So it's not like it's hard to get a high refresh rate monitor or anything like that. It's very common now, right? <clears throat> so basically, everyone playing on PC is playing on 120 hertz and getting better response time. That's number one. Number two, they all got modded joysticks. You know, I'm using a stock Kanba joystick, Obsidian. They're using fucking hitboxes, edited things, you know, things that basically make it even easier to control for them, right? And then on top of that, this I looked into it. Did you know that there's cheat mods? Yeah. People che are cheating in Street Fighter all the time. Right now, you can go online and you can download a mod for PC Street Fighter 6. Auto drive impact, auto throw break. I'm not kidding. It exists. You can get it right now. Now, I don't think a lot of people are using it, or maybe it's not as effective, because you notice most people don't break throws. So I don't think that it's as bad as people think, but it's possible. It's literally out there. These mods are there. And I'm like, wow. So it really is a world of difference. If I was playing on PC right now, I'd see everything faster. I'd be able to respond to everything much faster. I'd be I'd be able to use a custom joystick that, you know, would actually be better than the, the stock one. And fuck, everyone could just cheat. I could cheat. Not that I would. But I could cheat if I wanted to. See, when you're playing Street Fighter Six online, you actually have no clue what you're facing. You could be facing someone who's even with you, and you could be facing someone who has 10 fucking advantages on top of you. That's pretty ridiculous. Okay? So this whole cross fucking platform thing, I don't know, man. I don't think, I really don't think it's fair. You know, I don't, I'm just being honest. It's funny because as you guys have seen, when I'm playing and I try to respond to stuff, sometimes I can, sometimes I can counter drive impact. I do it sometimes, not all the time. There's some people I play them every time, instant counter drive impact. Why? Because they have 120 Hertz refresh rate or higher. So they're seeing it before me. They're able to respond to it before me. I have way less frames to react to. They have twice the frames or more to react to. So anyway, um. Basically, what Brian said is, it's not that big of a difference, but those are the differences and why probably most people are playing on PC, including him. He's playing it on PC, okay? So anyway, um, yeah, you know, I'm playing this game online, and it's just, it's been a mess since Wednesday. I don't feel like I'm actually doing any of these, casual or ranked, too. It hasn't even been any better in each. It just seems like, no matter how I'm playing it, it's just fucking delayed as shit. And it seems like it's worse than it was. It didn't feel like it was this bad when I first started playing the game. But if you want to know the truth, I think here's why. Because in reality, most people have uh, have gone to PC who are playing this long term. There's very few consistent players of this game that are just sitting there on console. Most people are playing it on PC, so they all have the advantage now. So literally, if you play it on console, you're the disadvantageous player. You're already playing with a, a, a rigged deck, basically, that's against your favor. A deck with, with no aces in it. So you gotta play the absolute hardest you've ever played every fucking match if you wanna try to win in Street Fighter 6 Online, apparently. <clears throat> it's pretty ridiculous, right? 
Um, so anyway, um, yeah, so I, I, it's been a nightmare. Two days, Wednesday and yesterday, three streams, I tried to play with Akuma, all right? So I learned good stuff with Akuma. I'm getting better, by the way. Like, I already learned it over the last three streams, you know, d different normals, either low, medium kick or, uh, standing, uh, standing medium kick or standing, uh, excuse me, crouching medium punch or standing fierce punch are all his best normals, Popes, and they all can two and one. His standing uh, fierce punch is really good. You could like step back and then press it to bait, and if it hits, you can you know do free combo, uh, a drive rush combo, or you could just do the quarter circle back plus punch, uh, heavy punch move. The what's it called? Adamant flame or something like that. Adamant fire, and it's safe on blocks, so it's like really good. He's got good combo ability. He's got mix ups. He's got option selects. He's got everything. The problem he doesn't have is health. His health is low, so you get hit once, you're screwed, and that's a major problem because. Online, as I said, I'm I'm I seem to almost always be at a disadvantage, um, and it just you know it's very hard for me to play a new character and not act like I'm gonna not make a mistake, right? And that's the thing is like it's a combination of I'm making a mistake and I it costs me, and then the game drops my input or won't block or won't react to something, and then it costs me, so I lose, I lose, and I lose, and I lose. I got I literally got Akuma to five star diamond after insane great placement matches. And then as soon as I got to ranked, it's like everything runs like shit. <clears throat> I can't get the game to react normally like it should. It seems like I'm playing underwater. That's the best way to describe it. I'm playing underwater. Everything's fine. Then all of a sudden I go to do something. It's like ultra sluggish. To give you some perspective, I'll walk up. I'll do low medium kick, drive rush, combo. The game will do walk up, no low medium kick, standing parry. Even worse, yesterday I was playing against Brian, so this was the controlled lobby. I'm playing with Dalsim, all right? And I did a combo, I knocked him away. After the combo, I wanted to do Fierce Punch Fireball. I input Fierce Punch Fireball. The game gave me Standing Parry. Why? Because it was buffering my Drive Rush from the combo. That was already completed. And I got burned out because of it. And I'm like, I didn't even touch the two medium buttons. I did Fireball plus Fierce Punch. How the fuck are you giving me parry input or drive rush input? This is the experience I'm getting right now. And I don't know how to fix it or solve it. The game is just not good right now. Playing it online is like a nightmare. Like, everything's fucking delayed or dropped or, or, or stacked. How do I get a fucking... Parry input, two medium punches or two medium buttons when I'm doing fireball plus fierce punch. That is a lot of delay that you're telling me that I did that during a combo and you're still reading the input like a full second later when I'm throwing a fireball. <laughs> I just, you know, I just don't get it. Uh, it makes me scratch my head. I don't understand. Right? So I don't know. I don't know what it is, you know? <laughs> So, great placement matches, get, get Okuma to five-star diamond, then I just can't win it at all. I don't think I, I, yesterday, I don't think I won a set. I'm serious. I don't believe I beat a single person in three hours of gameplay yesterday. I think I lost to every single person. I would, they would win, I would win, then they would win the third one. Like, pretty much that's how it went all day. So, I gained zero points. I lost a ton of points. I'm now in, like, mid-four-star diamond. And it, it got to the point where, like, I don't even want to play anymore. You know, I was so frustrated and upset. I'm like, why do I want to play when I literally can't have a match completed where all my inputs come out and the game reacts to what I'm doing? It just, it's like ignoring me. So, I don't know. And again, listen, a lot of people say, maybe it's you. You're right, maybe it is me. And I would tend to say, yeah, probably a lot of the time there's issues with me, but I got all the worst characters in the game to master without question and without issue, right? It was some challenge. There was Zangief for sure, but I, I got it done. How the fuck can I not play with Akuma? It doesn't make sense. Why is it now, again, a distinct difference from when I was playing earlier these last month to two months, getting everyone else to master and playing versus now? It seems like there has been a big change and I don't understand what it is. I don't get it. How could I, how could I have done all those wins and got everyone to master and now I can't get a single win with Akuma? It doesn't make any fucking sense.
And it just gets to the point where you're just like, at first it's anger, and then it's just like resignation. Like, I want to put out an entertaining stream for you guys. A stream where I just sit here and get spanked and the game doesn't respond to my inputs is not entertaining for anyone. It's not entertaining for me and it's not entertaining for you. It's just, it's fucking, why am I playing? Right? I might as well just sit here and talk with you guys for three hours or play a, a chill indie game or continue with Fallout 4. At least we're going to get some entertainment value out of it instead of a game that doesn't fucking respond. So, I don't know. Um, again, I'm not trying to say that I'm flawless. I know I'm not. I'm not the best player. I'm not a pro player. But the reactions I've gotten out of this game in the last two days are laughably fucking bad. Okay? So now, let's talk about last night. Because for Friday Night Fights, I did something completely different. For the first time in many years, I actually did some gameplay with my friend Brian. He's no, his his uh, Twitch channel is top tier rated, if you haven't seen it. Uh, and he actually streamed his perspective last night, and I streamed my perspective last night. We did a private lobby. Now, Brian is really good at Street Fighter VI. His main character is Mano, which is good for me because I don't really play many or good Manos, right? So it actually gives me good experience playing against him that I need because I don't have that kind of opportunity to play a bunch of good Manos. You know, play online, you're playing a thousand camis and fucking Kens and top tiers. You don't get to play a good mid tier. <clears throat> so, um, we did a private lobby. We played for about two and a half hours, okay? And it went really well. Like, first of all, the audience immediately noticed I wasn't getting heated because even when things weren't going my way or things were dropping, there's two key factors here, okay? Factor number one is that it's a controlled environment with someone you trust and is a nice person who's a good player. That's different than playing randoms online who are so salty and desperate and fucking try-hardish to win. They do any means necessary want to win. They fucking teabag and shit. They do dumb shit. They're morons, right? Just fucking mouth drooler, idiot gameplay. Brian is the complete opposite of that. He's a good player. He knows what he's doing. He's trying to use intelligent systems to win. And it's fun to play against someone who actually has a fighting game mindset instead of just a do 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 mindset, which is about 80% of the people you play as randoms online. Okay? It just is. It feels better playing against someone who's smart. <laughs> and it's a rarity to play someone who's smart in a fucking fighting game these days. Okay? Um... So that's number one. Number two, it's a it's a lobby. It doesn't matter if you have a match where things go bad. It's a throwaway. It's not like you're fucking trying to play in ranked and get to a rank, and then you're losing points and you're fucking stressing the fuck out over it or anything like that, right? And the other cool thing is that because you're in a lobby, you have the ability to swap characters. And that was one of the best parts, I think, about it. In the two and a half hours, I played with everyone. I played with Akuma, but I played with uh, Blanco, Zangief, Lily, Dalsim, and Honda. Honda the least, and Honda looks the most interesting because I think he's changed the most, but I didn't have enough time to really play with him. Um, and Brian, you, geez, Brian used Mano, Kami, uh, Ken, Ryu, Akuma, Guile, and he may have picked somebody else. I can't remember if he picked someone else. He might have, okay? So because of that, you got to see variety. Instead of just me playing one character for an entire stream and getting salty at losses. Instead, you got to see back and forth. You know, he was kicking my butt with Mano. Then I, I swapped out from Lily to Dalsim, and I actually started getting a good amount of wins with Dalsim. Then we he swapped, and then I swapped from Dalsim to, like, uh, Zangief, and I started losing badly again. But then I swapped to Blanca, and after a few losses, I started coming back, and I started winning. So it was fun to see the back and forth. And a lot of the matches were close. There was some good, interesting, you know, combos and mix-ups and things that were done. Um... It was just really fun. I liked that stream a ton because it's something so different than just, again, playing the fucking try-hard randoms online who just, at any means necessary, must win. Whether it means mashing jab the entire fucking round or abusing the fucking shitty connection or fucking teabagging in the middle of a match to be a dick, right? You know, and you know these idiots, if they, they squeeze out a win against someone like me who I don't consider myself good, beating Darkseid Phil in Street Fighter Six is not an accomplishment. In any way, shape, or form. I'm a nobody. I haven't literally, I've never played Street Fighter 6 offline once. I've only played the game online. So it's not like I even know how to really experience it in a really competitive environment, right? But these people, you know, oh my god, I'd be DSP and you're fucking bragging on the internet about dumb shit. Like, well, you're dumb. It's not an accomplishment. I suck. <laughs> it's not an accomplishment in any way, shape, or form to beat me today in a modern fighting game. But I had a I had a blast and if you didn't see it yet, 
a lot of people really enjoyed it because they said you weren't getting mad. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to get mad. I never used to get mad. When I used to go to arcades and play against people, I never got mad. When I had casual sessions offline, I never got mad. There's no reason to get mad. You're playing and you're learning. I definitely learned last night. I saw, you know, Mano versus Zangief. I don't know that match at all, and I was trying to learn things to do. Um, you know, again, I don't get to fight good Minos. So that was a really re re a rare thing, right? So I had a good time. I was like, this is neat. I want to continue this kind of gameplay if possible, but I want to know everyone's feedback. So I need everyone's feedback. Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? And by the way, go check out Brian's content because he does a lot of different stuff. He does Fortnite and other like online style games uh, like that. But he also does Street Fighter and other stuff. So you might want to give his stuff a look, okay? Like I said, his, his channel is top tier rated. You'll see in uh, in the videos I, I titled them there. <clears throat> um, So yeah, give it a look. Let me know what you think. If that's the kind of thing you like, I might do it every once in a while. I'm not saying I'm going to do it every single week or anything. But maybe we'll do it every once in a while. But here's the thing now. If you like it and you like that content, I got to figure out a way that we can communicate during it because we couldn't talk to each other because I'm on PS5, all right? Brian's on PC, so immediately we can't do the SN chat. It doesn't work. And we were talking about how could we get it to work. I was like, well, we could talk on the phone. The problem is microphones are directional. Like right now you can hear me well because I'm speaking towards the mic. But unless I have my phone somehow pointed at the mic, which I don't even know how I would do that. You won't be able to hear him talk, right? It's directional. So that doesn't work. Some people are like, well, why don't you use P Discord on PS5? We looked into it, but I don't have a microphone for PS5. The only thing I have is the built-in mic in the PS5 controller. And I don't think, again, similar, I don't think that would work. Um, uh, I, I, You know, it's a shitty mic. So he probably wouldn't even be able to hear me. Plus I was thinking, how would that work? Because if I have that controller on and the joystick, doesn't it override it? <clears throat> right? I think it overrides it. So I don't know how... I Again, it's the technicalities of how do I get this to work? How would I get a mic to work with my PS5? Would it have to plug into that the, the controller? Could I plug it into... Because this joystick has a port. But I don't know if that's only a headphone jack or if that could also work as a mic. It doesn't say. It's just a fucking port. So I don't even know. I You know, this is like something I got to try to look at. I guess look into and try to figure out. And if you guys have any recommendations. See, the thing is, when I had a PS4, I just wore headphones with a mic. I can't do that anymore because of my ear infections. I haven't wore headphones in four years. You know? Sucks. The easy solution is get headphones, and I can't do that. I can't wear headphones. Discord on PC would not work because on PC, you can only use your microphone for one task at a time. So if I'm using this microphone in OBS so you guys can hear me, I can't also dual use this microphone in Discord. It won't work. You can only use it in one or the other. So I can't do Discord on the PC at all. Plus, if that were the case, I wouldn't be able to hear Brian. His voice would be coming out through the PC over there, which I'm not hearing. So that doesn't work. Basically, we have to get it so that it goes through the PS5. Because that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing the audio of the PS5. You know, that's where I'm going to be able to use, like, like a, a another different microphone or whatever. Right? <clears throat> so, we'll have to figure it out. All right, let's talk about it. If anyone has ideas of a mic for PS5 that's not expensive, that maybe I could set up. But also how to get that mic to work with the in in I already know how to link a Discord to PS5. Like that's easy. The problem is getting it set up so that I can have my audio come from a microphone through that Discord. Brian can hear it. He could talk through Discord and the Discord would play through the PS5 audio so we all can hear it together. That's the challenge. Okay? <laughs> that's the challenge that we got to, to try to tackle. So let's talk about it. Let's try to figure this out. You know, because Brian plays other stuff too. You know, there's other games coming out and things. And it could be possible to do some more co-op and stuff. You know? So let's see. I'm very curious what your all your opinions are. Let me know if you liked that session last night. If you thought it's better than the random stuff that I do online with Street Fighter 6 for the last year. If you want to see more of that style of stuff. Please share. Okay?
Bush Wookie, you you're not listening to what I'm saying at all. And by the way, isn't that oh, okay? It's it's Chewbacca. <laughs> I was like, what is that picture? I can never see your guys' profile pics at all. They're too small. Wade says, yesterday's stream was fun. The biggest, His biggest advice to you is to study frame data in Street Fighter 6, but I doubt you have time for that. For me, I'm not going to study frame data. I'm going to learn on the fly. Like, I'm going to learn, oh, okay, Mano's standing medium punch is a faster move than, say, Blanca's low-medium kick, so I know that we're at mid-range. Don't use low-medium kick because her punch will stuff it, right? That's what I like. I'm not going to sit there and study the fucking frames and memorize eight frames versus seven frames, and this has frame advantage. It's a fucking fighting game. You go, you learn by beating people up. You don't learn by studying a fucking guidebook online with a bunch of fucking numbers, all right? <laughs> that, when I was growing up, there was no frame data. None of this existed. You go to the arcade and you learn the shit and you implement it. You don't fucking study like a fucking nerd in a book. Pointing at numbers and fucking with your protractor and measuring angles of the jump angle to see the hurt box and hit box hitting here. You play the game. <laughs> That's how you learned it, you know? <clears throat> so anyway, um, yeah, but yeah, I would love to be able to communicate with Brian if we do further sessions. I think it makes sense to talk it out and figure out what's going on, right? Okay, anyway, uh, so it went well. Let me know what you think. See, that, that was weird. I had three straight streams of frustration, and then I had one really good Friday Night Fight stream, and I was like, ah, that was like refreshing and something different, and it was very fun, and I learned which is the other good thing. If you're learning, that's, that's again, I've already said this. It's okay to lose in any competition. It doesn't matter what competition in life you lose in. As long as you learn something from it to improve yourself, then it doesn't matter that you won or lost. You're still improved and you got something out of it, right? When I'm sitting here trying to play online play against randoms with Akuma and half of my inputs drop and the idiots just fucking play shit patterns and it makes me fucking want to punch the wall... That's not, I'm not learning. I'm just, I'm just getting my heart, my blood pressure up and I'm getting pissed off. When I play against Brian, I actually learned stuff. I had fun. You know? <clears throat> the, bless, the best players use frame data? Yes, and the best players sit around playing Street Fighter Six all day long and they travel the entire world playing it nonstop and it's their job and their life. Street Fighter Six is not my job and my life. <laughs> it's not. It's never going to be. So if that is... Your conception, you are you are sadly very very misconceived. Uh, it's it's just something that I do in the midst of everything else. It just so happens that I'm I'm pretty good at fighting games, so I have a lot more comp competitive nature to it. But uh, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not going to be massively investing ton tons of my life into Street Fighter Six, right? Exactly. Big Papa Phil says it was very fun watching you have fun with the game. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what it used to be like. Usually you go to the arcade, you just have fun. You put you, your friends over your house. Like when I when I first started on YouTube and I was playing Street Fighter 4, I would have everyone come over and we would all play casual, you know, lobbies and circle and everything. We'd have a ton of fun playing with various characters and stuff. That's what it's all about. And then, hey, you play enough, you get good, you go to a tournament, you win, great, you lose, big deal. But, you know, it's not supposed to be every moment that you play the game is like the sweats fucking try hard competitive, annoying ass fucking people online. It's just stupid. And that's it's sad. It's just the mentality of what the whole fucking community has become. Every moment is so ultra serious. You missed the point of fighting games then. Really. You did. You missed the whole fucking point. It's not supposed to be that. <clears throat> like I said, we had some really good um, matches where they were like super close endings and stuff. And that's really neat. <clears throat> so anyway, good stuff yesterday. I hope you all checked it out. Schedule. Today, indies all day. Let's see which ones end up being cool and fun that you guys want to see more of. There will be uh, food at some point. I don't know what. Depends on my wife, how she's feeling. There'll probably be some booze over the course of the day. and you know, Probably not immediately, but maybe you know, a little bit into the day, I'll have a drink or two, right? And, uh, and then, uh, later today, well, excuse me. Um, boy, I'm being stupid because I got distracted by chat. Uh, tomorrow is React Day. Tomorrow, no games at all. So today, a full day of indie games. Tomorrow, no games at all. Tomorrow, it's time to react. So it's going to be the, the DSP versus the Internet Clip Show on DSP React. And then it's going to be the premiere of the Retro React event, Mario and Sonic at the 2012 London Olympic Games. 
over on DSP Throwback. That's going to be neat. Seriously, that's going to be so neat because for me, all right, that's one of my favorite co-op playthroughs I ever did from back in the day. It's so much fun. It was from 2011. It was so much fun. Just three guys dicking around, hanging out, razzing each other, playing a silly ass game, having fun with it. And like I said, from time to time, I still go back and watch some parts of that playthrough myself just to put a smile on my face if I'm feeling down or pissed off about something. It always makes me laugh. So that's going to be fun to, to actually see that together starting on Sunday night. It's going to be super fun. I'm telling you. And it's not a long one. I think we played like six hours of it that day or something like that. But it's such a fun experience. So anyway, so that's Sunday night. Then Monday, we return to games. Monday's daytime stream will be Street Fighter Six, And I decided no Akuma. Enough with fucking Akuma. All right. I like the character, but right now I'm just so frustrated at trying to play with them. What I want to do is try to play this new version of the game with these characters that I'm good with already. So I haven't decided who yet, but I'm going to pick at least one, if not more characters and you know play with them online on Monday stream and try to get back into the swing of things. Hopefully, you know, instead of being so ultra fucking frustrated, pick characters I'm good with. So that'll be Monday's daytime stream. And then Monday night is the conclusion of Hellblade 2. We've only got one to two hours left. Um... And so that'll be fun uh, to, to finish up the game and see how it ends. Tuesday is the premiere of Multiverses. Yeah, Multiverses actually fully releases on Tuesday. And it's going to be exciting to see what modes the game has and stuff because I actually don't know. I don't know if they put any single-player content into it at this point or if it's just going to be online modes, but there's all new characters now. You got Jason Voorhees, you got Agent Smith, you got the Joker. You got all the characters that were added that I never played, like Stripe and other characters like that. So... It should be fun. Uh, I'm, you know, should, hope you'll join me for that, and we'll see if it's any good. And if it's something good, then maybe I'll keep playing it. We'll see. And then probably that Tuesday night, I was thinking we'll probably do, um, like Fallout Four, so we can at least get some Fallout Four into the rotation for this week. And then Wednesday, we could kind of do whatever. But I'm thinking if Multiverses was good, we might want to keep playing it. So I guess Wednesday we can decide: do we want to do Street Fighter Six? Do we want to do Multiverses? Do we want to do Fallout Four? Like we have all these options, right? All these good games. Now also, depending on how today goes, there may be one or more indie games that we like that we want to get into the rotation. And so moving forward into June, there'll still be Street Fighter Six. There might or might not be multiverses, depending on how it goes. We're going to continue with Fallout 4. And then maybe we'll have some indie game stuff. And this will be our rotation for the next several weeks heading into June. Keep in mind, there's other things too. For example, the System Shock remake is coming out. Maybe we could do that. And this is all, of course, leading into the insanely cool and epic Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC coming up at the end of June that everyone wants to see. Um, including me, of course. And, uh... In addition to... Oops. In addition to that... Keep in mind, in early June, we have all the events. The Summer Game Fest, the Xbox Direct, and we have to figure out how I'm going to be covering that stuff, because I don't know. I actually don't know if I'm going to be doing it live coverage, if I'm just going to do recap reactions we haven't determined that yet and that's coming up quick that's in only like two weeks so we got to figure that out guys okay system shot remake did come out i thought it did i knew they all came out around the same exact time so all right cool all right so folks it is time for dsp news a very short one today we don't have a lot of stories to talk about today which is fine um here we go. Story number one. Oh, I only have one story. I thought I had more than one. No, I only have one story today. It has been revealed that there is a new Doom game that is going to be revealed during the Xbox Direct coming up in early June. The name of the game is Doom the Dark Ages. Okay? Early details is that it's going to be Doom, but in a medieval world. And it's going to be cross-platform, meaning it is not just going to be on Xbox or an Xbox Studio game. They're saying that it's going to be cross-platform on PlayStation and on everything. Okay? Now, how do I feel about this? Well, number one, I loved Doom 2016. I did not love Doom Eternal. I felt that what happened was Doom 2016, they tried to make a hybrid game that kind of played like classic Doom, but then added some new elements. That was fine. With Doom Eternal, they basically ditched all the classic elements. They just made it a game based on complete 
visceral movement in combat. Just you're constantly moving, shooting, right? If you remember, it was like rock, paper, scissors. You had to keep doing one kind of damage to get armor. You had to get the armor to get the next thing. You had to get the rage thing to get the next thing. And it just kept going in a loop, if you remember. So if you kept flowing, free flowing in the combat between these three things, basically you could just coast through the game and that's what the game was. But it was constant adrenaline, constant movement. You didn't really have time to ever catch your breath. There was never time to just sit back and relax and enjoy the game or explore. And that was a big part of Classic Doom. And then every once in a while, something would open and scare you. A wall would open, a bunch of fucking, you know, demons behind it or whatever. Like, oh, shit, jump. I gotta, you know, survive. But that was part of the element of Classic Doom. A lot of people would argue that Classic Doom was like horror, right? Doom Eternal feels nothing like Doom at all. It, it really it just doesn't. It's like, this is where they wanted to go with the series to change it. But if that's the case, then don't call it Doom. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't feel like Doom. And by the way, the plot is ludicrously stupid. The game's plot is so bad. Oh, yes, the Space Marine actually was not just a Marine fighting off an alien invasion from hell on Mars. Oh, no, he was a superhero who was going through space and was known as this fucking guy. Who, he was also fighting these, these not only, you know, hell demons, but angel aliens and things. It's like, what the fuck did you do? You, you basically turned a franchise that used to be just simple fun. Hell on Earth, hell is coming, kill the demons, save the planet, ultimate badass. And instead, you overcomplicated it into this convoluted nonsense of you have to constantly be moving around and fucking, oh, I got fucking ADD. I can't just sit here for five seconds and do some lore or explore or have some atmosphere. I got to be going over here, you know, rip your head off, shove it up your ass, take a shotgun, one barrel up each nostril, boom, blows your head up. All oh, the brains absorb all the fucking rage. Out, rage, punch up. Like, dude, what the fuck? You chill out for a fucking second. Not everyone likes that. I didn't like it at all. I'm like, this isn't Doom at all. And it's okay if you like it, if that's your style of game. That's not Doom at all. So when they're now saying, oh, so this is now going to be uh, Doom Medieval or whatever, right? Well, what's going to happen? It, it sounds to me, here's what's going to happen. So now you don't even need guns because now it's just the same formula. But now you're going to have fucking swords, right? And fucking lances and spears and visceral carnage running around doing flying kicks and punches and slashing and, and with the with the sword and stuff. So basically it'll play nothing like Doom. Like literally it'll 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 not be Doom at all. In any way, shape, or form. But you'll still call it Doom because you want the name recognition. You know, Doom 2016 was cool. It had the secret rooms from original Doom. Remember that? That was neat. It was like it was a, a game that it understood it had to change. For a modern audience, but it also was an homage to the classics. So it was like that perfect formula of nostalgia and also new gameplay. Doom Eternal said, fuck you if you like the old Doom. Go fuck yourself. I only care about these new kids who like fucking snorting pixie sticks up their fucking noses before they play video games. Like, what? You know? Anyway, so I didn't like Doom Eternal because of that reason. I played the whole thing. I beat it. And at the end of the day, I was like, wow, that was such a fucking disappointment. And apparently, I'm in the massive minority. So many people, I guess, loved Doom Eternal. Not me. I thought that Doom 2016 was a much better game that felt more like Doom. And I think that Doom Eternal ran it off the rails to something that it wasn't supposed to be. It lost the spirit of classic Doom, and the plot was stupidly shit. So now, oh, now it's Doom Medieval. So now you're going to go and fucking be a space knight. And you're, gonna, you're like, dude, no, no, no. <laughs> You, you want to know, if they want to do Doom Medieval, don't make Doom Medieval. You know what they should make? Hexen. Anyone ever play Hexen before? So Hexen is Doom set in a medieval world with magic. So instead of guns, you're shooting fireballs and flames and ice and lightning and stuff like that. And it's cool. There's demons and stuff you're fighting. It's, it's more supposed to be like dark magic as opposed to, you know, Doom. Just fucking make Hexen because then it'll be good. Because then it's a different game. It's not Doom. Oh, we need the Doom recognition. No, you don't. Just make a game for yourself, right? Is it? Monty Mole says Immortals of Avium is a modern Hexen. It's a shame, then, that the game failed so bad. It's a shame they released at the same time as uh, uh, Baldur's Gate 3. So no one played it, and they didn't, and EA didn't market it at all. So no one even knew it existed. It's on Game Pass right now, Immortals of Avium, if anyone wants to give it a look. Um, maybe it's good. 
Maybe it's something to play, right? Okay. So anyway, that's the only real news. I couldn't find anything else. So now we... Whoa. Whoa. Wait a minute. Hold on. Calm down there, uh, Dumas. All right. So it's the wrong thing. Um, uh, Let's start with shout outs, shall we? Let's do some shout outs. Oh my God. Excuse me. I felt that coming. Oh my God. Massive indigestion. Before I start with shout outs, I just want to say today is one long stream. Okay? It's not two streams, it's one long stream. Typically, during a day like today, all right, my goal would be to hit 50 bucks in tips on each stream. Obviously, if I'm streaming all day, then that means my goal is probably to hit around $100 in tips for the entirety of the day. Today would be a great day if you're going to be around and you want to support the content to maybe do some gifted memberships. We will likely have a variety of different people on the stream today for various different games, right? As opposed to just, oh, I'm here only for Street Fighter. I'm here only for this style. We'll probably have a bigger, wider uh, group of people here to check out different indie games. So if you were thinking of supporting the channel via you know, gifted memberships, today would be a great day to do that for sure. Um, so thank you in advance. Now, today, would I do goals? Yes, I would. Yesterday, Wednesday, I wasn't doing goals. Meaning I wasn't really putting on hats. I wasn't doing vests. Why? Because when I play Street Fighter, I get fucking heated. If you haven't noticed, my adrenaline goes way up. My body temperature goes way up. My blood pressure goes up. I can't be piling on clothes onto myself in that situation. I'm just going to end up feeling sick and not doing myself a favor being completely soaked in sweat. Today is a much, much, much more laid back day where we're just going to relax, have a good time together. So yes, there absolutely will be goals in effect. Um, you know, whether or how how much of an effect is up to you. Like, for example, right now, if we hit 50 bucks in tips, I don't know if I would put on the Gunner glasses for the podcast, but I would probably put it on when we're playing games because it makes sense then, right? We could probably swap. If we, if we hit multiple goals, like we've, we've done this before in marathons. Let's say we hit the full $150 tips goal, so I got a hat and a vest on. We hit 200 we could do a hat swap, something like that, okay? So... We'll see how the day goes over the course of the day. I'm not expecting anything crazy or anything like that at all. I'm just saying, hey, you know, it is a longer day. It's going to be one very long stream. And it'll be great if you support it. Thank you in advance. All right, so now let's get to shout outs. <clears throat> we start off with No Tango De Niro, who did a super chat and said, chill day. Thank you to No Tango De Niro for that. Magoo. Did a five dollar super chat. Thank you to Magoo and Hair of the Dog. Just did a two dollar super chat. So let's go ahead and get Hair of the Dog on the leaderboard. Also, Sergio just popping the twenty six month uh, membership message and says, "Hey Phil, good to be here. It's good to have you here, Sergio. Welcome to the stream." Dances, can we tip for shots today? Well, first of all, I don't want to start drinking yet. It's too early. But maybe if we get into games and then, you know, if food is coming close, maybe we, you know, something like that. But I don't, I don't, I haven't done that in a while, right? I really haven't. Like, I haven't done that in a while, taking, like, tipping for shots and stuff like that, you know? Jade, thank you. He says, I hope that your, your wife feels better. And fast and say hi to Kat. I'm just going to be here to chat today. Sounds good. Jade, you know, you might like some of this stuff. Did you, Jade, did you ever watch me play Hades? few years ago. I liked the game a lot. It's pretty good. I don't know about these other games, though. Like, I don't know if Pizza Tower or Noita is going to be anything good. Maybe. I don't know. But it's good to have you here hanging out. Um. All right. So, anyway. Oh, my nose. Uh, thank you, Sergio, for 26 months as a member. Uh, we have a tip to start today. A $25 anonymous tip. There's no name attached to it. Thank you for whoever this is, a $25 anonymous tipper. I really appreciate that. We get the tipping started today. But uh, there's no name on that one. I gotta, man, I got to fix this text. See how skinny it looks now? Because they changed it. Hold on a second. Since we're, since we're here doing this, why did they change that? Font weight, 400. I think I used to have font weight, 800. Let's try font weight, 800. Save settings. Let me test this again. Okay, ready? That's much better. 
I need font weight of 800. So whenever I do these animations, I have to save it. Okay. I can also change the color. I think that one's it matches game over all white, so that's good. But for some of the other ones, maybe I'll change the text color. But I like that that matches. I have to customize some of this stuff. Okay, so thank you to the anonymous $25 tipper, whoever you may be. I appreciate that very much. And that's our first tip of the day. And I think I'm caught up. All right, so our poll is in. And Pizza Tower has won to be the first game we're going to be playing today. So Pizza Tower will start the marathon. And then we'll do a poll after Pizza Tower is done to determine what the next game is. And that was close. That was 35% to 34% of the vote. Uh, excuse me. Pizza Tower. Cool. Uh, shout out to... Rhino H2, who just did a super chat, says, I've been a fan since Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Wow. You've been a fan for a very long time. Thank you, Rhino H2, for the super chat. Good to have you here today. Hope you're ready to have a relaxing day. Because it's going to be so relaxing compared to the last two days. I really... I, I, I'll be honest with you guys. I didn't actually... Uh, plan it this way. It's not like I was like, oh, I need to have a mar an Indies Marathon after Street Fighter Six. It just kind of lined up this way. So I am so happy to have this relaxing day after the stress that we've had in the last week. Can you turn off turn off crossplay when playing Street Fighter? You can, but we tried it and it made it worse because you have way less players. That's the problem. Like, if you turn off crossplay, you end up playing the same people all day. As opposed to if you have crossplay on, the vast majority of people playing Street Fighter 6 are playing it on PC. So you need to have crossplay on to get that player base, or else you're just playing the same people regardless, you know, just endless ma same matchups it gets boring thank you very much Dark Soul Master Dark Souls Master did a super chat he says Phil hope your stream does well Elden Ring is coming soon yeah a little over three weeks right just about a month now and of course I'm excited more and more information keeps coming about uh, coming out about the DLC um the more they talk about it it sounds more like a semi sequel right than a a DLC. It's going to essentially be around half the length of Elden Ring. And Elden Ring who played the whole game was around 100 hours. So it sounds like we're getting like a 50 hour experience out of Shadows of the Earth Tree, which is pretty dope, right? Clamp Cut Ty says, it was nice to see you actually having fun playing Street Fighter 6. It was a great night. Thumbs up. Thank you for the feedback. I'm, glad, I'm happy to hear that. Because you know you get nervous. It was number one. It's the first time that I've done anything like that in many years. You know, I used to do stuff like that and I haven't in ages. Um... I was nervous that people were going to be like, oh, you know, it's just the same person over and over. It gets boring. I don't think so. I think it's because we both <clears throat> used a variety of characters. It ended up not getting boring, right? If we were all just... If it was just Blanca versus Mano for two and a half hours, you probably would have went to sleep. But because, you know, the variety that was played ended up being better, right? So I think that's why it worked. Ben Boxer says, most console players on Street Fighter 6 use Wi-Fi, unfortunately, I've noticed. Uh, I don't know about most, but some do, which is very stupid. You should never be playing a competitive game online with Wi-Fi in any case. It's it's just a detriment to everyone playing. Oh, Jade loves Hades. I'm glad you love Hades, Jade. Cool. I'm excited to see if Hades 2 is similar or even bigger, like a big improvement over the first one. You know, I don't know. I really hope it runs well on this PC. I don't know. I hope we can adjust it and make it run good because Hades 1 ran really well on, uh, what was it, Xbox? Xbox Series X? So I hope that Hades 2 runs well on this mini PC. Fingers crossed, everybody. It's visually a lot better, but it plays a little different. Ah. Interesting. I like how in Hades, there were so many different builds, right? You do a melee build with a quick sword. You do a melee build with a big, powerful, chunky weapon that you charge. You could do ranged attacks with... With the bow, you could, you know what I mean? Magic. Oh, there's so many things in that game that were neat. Purple Mouse Gaming says, I did, I really hope that you'll get Brian on Street Fighter 6 chatting with you because I loved watching when you guys played Apex Legends together with him and Kekken. Yeah, it was many years ago. I think he would bring some great insight to the stream. 
Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I played the entire playthrough of D Destiny 2 I played with Brian, and we did Apex Legends for, like, a month. And we were winning. Like, we were winning, Matt. We were winning constantly. I think we won, like, four or five times within, like, two sessions. We were like, damn, it's kind of getting too easy now. We're spanking everybody, right? <clears throat> but the problem is, all right, every time that I do that, when I do a session where I do co-op like that and I'm talking with someone else, people complain that I'm not giving them attention, right? Now, in the case of Street Fighter, guess what? I you, I wouldn't be giving you guys attention much anyway because I'm focusing on the game. So probably if me playing Street Fighter and doing voice chat, it's not that big deal because I wasn't going to be sitting here talking to you guys regardless. I was playing the game, correct? But when I did those co-op playthroughs, people didn't like them. Destiny 2, Apex Legends, they didn't do well. People complained that it was too much of me being distracted talking with the party and talking with the chat. They didn't like that. That's why I, I kind of phased those out. <clears throat> Pizza Tower has similar animations to Ed, Ed, and Eddie. It's a weird animation. I'm looking at it right now. It's very bizarre. <laughs> so hopefully it's entertaining. I heard it plays like Mario Land or uh, Wario Land, right? Like those old Wario handheld games. And I played, I played one of them or two of them. I played one of them, I think, on Game Boy, and one of them I played in the freaking Virtual Boy demo. So I kind of know, but I never really played it extensively. But I kind of understand what it is. I received a $2 tip. Pepino is my chunky daddy. Says Pizza Tower hype. Pepino is the main character. Brian is an awesome dude. I give him a follow on Twitch. He has fun content. There you go. <clears throat> the cool thing about Brian is he just doesn't do a lot of stuff like I do. Like, you know, he does a lot of the online multiplayer stuff and co-op stuff. I don't. So that's a whole different style of content. Right? Really? It plays like Wario Land 4 on the Game Boy Advance. The soundtrack is great. They sampled the live-action Mario movie. <laughs> That's funny. Pro 102 says, I got it. never got a chance to watch your Cuphead playthroughs. I've been binging the games. I'm thinking of buying them. Well, oh. oh, you've been binging the playthroughs. You're thinking of buying the game. Cuphead's great, but you have to understand it's tough. Like, it's purposefully made to be difficult because it's supposed to be kind of like old school, very challenging games because they're short. You know, like back in the day, games weren't long lengthy. So they had to make them difficult. <laughs> you have something to do. Um, or, or, you know, if they were easy, you beat it in, in an hour. Like, why did I buy this game? So, but that's what it feels like. And I like that with Cuphead, there's different ways to play it, different weapons and stuff. Um, I like Cuphead and its expansion. Sadly, just short games. And that's kind of the sad part is that they're too short-lived. They're super fun for while they last, but they just don't last very long, you know? I may try the Paper Mario remake. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see if I, you know, if I if you get around to it right now. I'm not interested in grossing myself in another RPG. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but it's possible. <sighs> Oh, tickle in my throat to screw me up. Okay, guys, so we have a little bit of extra time. What, uh, whatever you guys want to talk about, tag me in the chat. Uh, Don Fiducci already said, I have no idea what we're eating today for Feasting with the King. It depends on how my wife's doing, so we got to see how she's doing later today. Jade says, I tried to play Street Fighter 6 on Xbox and I couldn't you couldn't find anyone. You gotta you gotta turn on crossplay. Because then you'll play people from all consoles. It sounds like you have it set just for Xbox. You're right. There's probably no one playing it on Xbox. You have to, if you set it to crossplay, then you'll play it with people on PS5 and PC. <clears throat> That's a menu option. Actually, yeah, it's in your it's in your options when you're selecting your character. You go, I think you press L. Well, left bumper, it'll take you to the menu that says things like ranked or casual play. And then there it should say cross play on or off. Turn it on and then you should be able to get people. Any chance of doing a watch party for Combo Breaker tomorrow? No. I am busy doing my React content. I'm not interested in Combo Breaker. <clears throat> Uh, 
Why do less people play Street Fighter 6 on Xbox compared to PC and PS5? Uh, honestly, console popularity. For example, last console gen, if you remember, all right, PlayStation 4 was the console for Street Fighter 5 until it got ported to PC. It never got ported to Xbox. So you could not play Street Fighter 5 on Xbox. So because of that, most people in the fighting game community are either playing on PS5 or PC. They already have the equipment. They didn't buy a console to play Street Fighter 6, do you see? So essentially it's just, okay, anyone who was left in the in the dark or left behind and couldn't play Street Fighter last game, who's jumping on now, probably bought it on Xbox, but everyone else just got it for whatever their already present console or platform was. <clears throat> Canadian Debo, you better be happy that I'm not going to ban you right now. Seriously. What a dumb thing to say. <laughs> what an incredibly dumb thing to say. Nobody cares. How was Zangief from Marvel vs. Capcom 2? Awful. One of the worst. Basically, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, alright, you only had two chances to be a good character. If you were rushed down, or if you had high maneuverability... Uh, and or good co like cancels like for example if you're Magneto right uh, and you could get in someone's face constantly great character um, uh, Sentinel which is kind of a hybrid of rush down and flying around um, Storm who could rush down but also could zone with her tornado into super and her super was incredibly good and she had a high air combo ability um the one exception would be, be uh, Cable, because Cable didn't have much of that, but he had the ability to just keep comboing his super into itself over and over. So if he had three level 3 super, basically he could kill anyone in the game instantly if he hits them with the first one. Uh, but basically, there was that, and then there was some gimmick play. Like, there were certain characters that people would use for gimmicks or as solely as assists um, that were pretty powerful. But for the most part, sadly, MVC2... It was kind of meant to be like the ultimate party fighting game with an insanely huge cast. No kidding. Like 90% of the cast is terrible. They're just not good for competitive play and no one uses them. Yeah, I mean, like most of the, the characters are not used in that game at all. You just never see them. They're just a waste of a spot. And that's so many. <laughs> so many characters are never touched. You, you forget that they're in there. Like um, the guy who was the main character of Star, Star Gladiator, he's in the game and no one like ever has used him. I couldn't even tell you what his special moves are or anything because no one selects that character. You know? He, they're, they're terrible. They 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 wanted the game to be a fun game with a ton of content and it ended up just being like 90% of the content is never played because the, the top tiers are so brokenly different and faster and better than the rest that no one ever uses the other characters. <laughs> Have Shoto's always been better in Street Fighter compared to Grapplers? Oh, uh, the thing is, here, here's the thing. With Street Fighter, archetypes are all played completely differently, right? Like, for example, zoners and keep away characters usually don't have high damage output, but the whole idea is if they play perfectly well, you never get to them, so they, they're keeping you away, but then they have to play perfectly, so make the risk that they, they can't make a mistake. If they make a mistake and you get in on them, right, then they suck. So that's Dalsim, right? Then you got your grapplers. That's the opposite philosophy where you need to, to constantly be close to the opponent and try to stuff their moves or counter hit them or trick them into getting a giant high damage throw as opposed to other co characters who have to do a big combo to do big damage. The grappler just has to get the one throw, right? But it has to stuff what the opponent is doing. So it's different philosophies, okay? Shotos are meant to be a hybrid. They can zone with fireball uppercut stuff, but they also can be that kind of in your face, uh in your face fighting, right? Um, and doing big combos and the like. So that's it. Like they're kind of like jack of all trades kind of characters. And because of that, Shotos have been pretty dominant in fighting games for a very long time. Now, there's some exceptions to that. There's been some games where, you know, the Dragon Punch sucks. So, it's not really a good reversal move, and therefore, it doesn't have much use, right? But for the most part, in a game where your Dragon Punch has 
invincibility at some point. Their fireball is fast and, and is good for, for zoning. Um, and they have decent combos. They're usually up there. They may not be top, top tier, but they're usually up there. Grapplers, honestly, I hate to say it, it's not common to see a grappler be at the top of the rankings of a fighting game. Notably because usually a grappler uh, has, a, has a, a hard counter from the zoner type character. It's very hard for a grappler to get in on someone who's trying to keep them away with with fireballs, stretchy limbs, etc. Right? Now, in some cases, Shodos are better in certain fighting games than others at zoning. So in a game where they're zoning better, yeah, grapplers have a hard time. Zangief can have a really hard time getting in on Ken, Ryu, Akuma in a game where they can just do fireball uppercut. You know, they just keep him away. Can't get in. Even with a spinning uh, clothesline, a lot of the times the clothesline is slow and doesn't have good reach or hitboxes. So they can get through the fireball, but then you, you can't get any closer because you're kind of wide open in recovery of the, the, the clothesline. Now, there's been some exceptions. For example, in Super Street Fighter 4, they gave Zangief the green hand move and they made it ridiculously good to the point where it was one of the fastest moves in the game. So Zangief could move across the screen doing an EX green hand and immediately do whatever he wanted. He could do a tick throw, he could do a combo, he could do whatever. And it was insanely good for combos as well. And it would do giant chunks of damage. So probably out of like all the fighting games that I've played, I would argue that like Super Street Fighter 4 Zangief is probably one of the best grapplers in history. And it's not because he's a grappler. It's because they gave him this crazy good green hand move that passes through fireballs and everything, has invincibility, and leads to combo setups and mix-ups, traps, everything. Um, but no, in general, grapplers are usually like mid-tier at best, if if not bottom. They are some of the weaker characters, you know? Um, and it's funny because everyone says ever since that version of Zangief, like Capcom refuses to make Zangief good in any game ever again, which is kind of true. He was shit terrible in in two fighter five he was bad in in his appearance other appearances too and now he's not very good in street fighter six you know wade says you were you were a beast at marvel's capcom i watched your mvc one two and three online gameplay a couple weeks ago you would go in a big win streaks in those games are you sure mvc isn't your best game mvc i played more like that was the the premier game See, I grew up playing classic Street Fighter, but as soon as the Versus series came out, that's all anyone played. So it was hard to even find people playing like Street Fighter 3 or anything. For me, it was everyone's MVC, MVC, MVC. So I had to play it. And MVC 1 and 2, I played the living shit out of. Like, I really played the crap out of those games. Um, And so that's why, you you know, I, I went, you're right, you know, beasting streaks and stuff, right? But it's just funny, because now you look, no one plays them anymore. Like, they went from the height of popularity to dead. Now everything's back to basics, right? Basic Street Fighter again. <clears throat> Although it is funny, because MVC used to be the game known for speed, right? If you want to play a fast-paced fighting game, you play MVC, Marvel vs. Capcom, because everyone had a wave dash. Everyone had air dash everyone had crazy juggles everyone had infinite combos right and then what's happened now if you haven't noticed the games that used to be more slower paced they now all have that street fighter 6 has drive can drive rush so now you can dash across the entire screen and do fast combos and rushes which is what used to be the gameplay of mvc so what ends up happening is mvc or just the versus series in general lost prominence but a lot of the gameplay elements have carried over to other fighting games you know, if, if Street Fighter VI didn't have Drive Rush, it might not be as popular as it is because people would be like, oh, it's too slow, right? It plays too slowly. I don't know. I, I like Drive Rush, but I don't like certain elements of it. I don't like a game where the entire game is based on rushing, and it seems like a lot of times that's pretty much Street Fighter VI in a nutshell, but there's some exceptions, you know, Dalsim, JP, they don't want to be played as just rushing down, you know? <clears throat> Hair of the dog. Thanks for another super chat. Appreciate that. Don Fanucci is really cruising for a band today. <laughs> it really is. When will the gaming marathon begin? Shortly. When the podcast ends, 
we will get set up with the first game of the day. What I'll do is I'll take a break to use the bathroom. I'll see how my wife's doing. You know, I'll see if she's decided anything on food yet. What's up, Venom Snake? How you doing? All right, if anyone wants to, to have a last topic to discuss, tag me in the chat, or if any contributions come in, I will shout them out. Ooh. Am I hyped for the Warhammer game after the trailer? I don't know. It might be good. It looks decent, at least. The thing is, I'm, I don't really know Warhammer lore. So for me, it's kind of like... You know, if the game is good, great, but I'm not going to really understand what the hell's going on or the implications of it, right? We're doing four indie games today. First game will be Pizza Tower, and then after that, we'll do a poll over the course of the day to determine the order we play the games. The other games are Hades 2, Noita, and Stardew Valley. <clears throat> Well, congrats on closing on your first home. Canadian Debo apparently bought a house in Tennessee, so you can't be Canadian Debo anymore if you're not Canadian. How's the day going for me? It's going all right. So far, a nice chill beginning, which is what I wanted. I wanted a nice relaxing start today, which is what I'm getting. What's what is your what do they call it if you live in Tennessee? A ten a ten a a Tennessean? Are you a Tennessean? When I lived in Connecticut, listen to this. You were called a Connecticutter. Connecticutter. I'm not kidding. Well, I'm not a Connecticutter anymore. Now I'm a Washingtonian. All right. <clears throat> I'm not Canadian. I changed my name as a parody because I was falsely accused of being Canadian Kirk last night. Well, now you should be Tennessean. You should be Tennessean. Right? Is that what it is? Ten Tennessean? A Tennessite? <laughs> Are you a Tennessite? That sounds like a that sounds like a cultist. A Tennessite. I think it's Tennessean, right? That's what it should be. Tennis a Tennessean. Did I ever like Evil Ryu or Oni? Uh, I never played with Oni. And Evil Ryu, I... That was... Evil Ryu, when Evil Ryu released, if I remember correctly, that was the last time I played Street Fighter 4. Like, like basically got to a point where I didn't want to travel and play in tournaments anymore. I was having way more fun and getting more results just being a variety content creator on YouTube. So that was when I kind of retired from competitive play of any fighting game. So I remember at first I was trying out Evil Ryu and trying to figure him out. And now I kind of like, I didn't care anymore. So I just stopped playing. And then after that, they released a ton of characters that I never played. Oni. Um, wasn't there also like Kage and others? I think there was like three or four more DLC characters they released for Street Fighter 4 I'd never even used. And then I, I only played Street Fighter 4 at the very end of its life cycle when they brought in like Hugo and stuff like that. And then they had the final, uh, uh, what was it called? Ultra Street Fighter 4 or whatever. It was the final version. I played a little bit of that. <clears throat> and then that was it. So, but no, I never, I basically half, halfway through the life cycle of Street Fighter 4, I liked the game, but it got to a point where they kept rebalancing it, and I didn't want to play it as a competitive player, so I didn't want to keep playing over and over and practicing, so I'd be like, okay, time to play, wait, why is this one character dominate the whole game now? Because that's what it was, I remember there was an update, it was like, it was like Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition or something like that, all of a sudden, Fei Long was the best character in the game. And he had been atrociously bad before. And now all of a sudden, he can do a free hit string that's uninterruptible, that has frame advantage on everyone, that does ginormous damage to everyone, and resets and he can do it again, and no one can really stop it or blow through it. So you just gotta like play a, a fucking stupid game of 
of waiting game against him. And you're playing it and you're like, what did they do to this game? Like, at first, it was kind of unbalanced and broken in vanilla. Then in Super, it was still unbalanced, but it was more fun. But I guess everyone hated the fact that Zangief was good. Then Arcade Edition comes out and the game was like completely fucked up and different. And after that, I was kind of like, you know, I'm stopping to care now. I just don't really care anymore about this game changing. Every It was basically like once a year, the entire game would feel like you're playing a new game again. And it's like, I don't want that. I want a game that I can go back to every once in a while and play and enjoy. Imagine if every time you went to go back to play Super Turbo, it was different. Every time you went to go back to play Marvel vs. Capcom 2, there was a new character. Like, huh? So it kind of it kind of turned me off, honestly. And I, I gave up on it through halfway through its life cycle to do other stuff. And like I said, I would dabble in it every once in a while, but I basically just stopped caring. And then I was I was basically like all my eggs in one basket for Street Fighter V, hoping it would be good. And it was the opposite. It was like the worst game ever. Then I just got, got really just disillusioned with fighting games for a long time. Okay. I think, guys, it's time to end the show. Thanks for chilling with me. Thanks for a nice, relaxing podcast. I had a good time. And what we're going to do now is we're going to swap over to start with Pizza Tower, which I don't know much about besides it plays like Wario Land or whatever. So probably what I'll do, every time that we swap games, I'll probably do a new post so people know. So I'll probably post up on X and on my channel page, hey, uh, FYI, we're going to begin with Pizza Tower. You know, come in if you're interested in that game. Uh, guys, remember, this is one stream today. So today, it would be great if you could support the stream. And basically, we're kind of treating it like like I'm doing two. So like I said, my goals usually when I stream is to raise 50 bucks per stream. So if I raise 100 bucks of tips by the end of the day, I consider that a success. Uh, anything else? Super Chats, membership, gifted memberships, appreciated. Today would be a great day with a variety of people that will probably be on the stream for gifted memberships. People would probably be here for them and enjoy them. All right? So please consider it. All right? But in the meantime... Thanks for being a chill audience, and uh, I think it is time to begin our little marathon shindig. What do you think? All right, so thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I hope that you enjoyed the Level 1 podcast. Tomorrow, I'm sure we'll be talking about how all of these uh, games went and which ones perhaps I'm interested in playing in the future or you want to see me play in the future, and we'll go from there. All right, everyone, thank you. Enjoy the show. See you tomorrow.